For the Stanford Decision Making Under Uncertainty class, I have created a program that can predict what the ideal move a spy master can make in a game of code names. It looks at the current state of the board and does a forward search over future board states to decide a clue that will give human players the best odds of guessing their words the quickest. Codenames is a team-based game where players have to guess a subset of words given a hint. Players are broken up into two teams, red and blue, and have two different roles. There's a spy master, which can see the affiliation of every word in the game, and they give one word hints for the operatives to guess uh, which words belong to their team, and then there's the operatives, who are guessing the words given, uh, using hints given by the spy master. And then the typical spy master strategy is to give hints that have a high probability of being guessed and relate to a large number of words. So prior work, uh, people have done this in the past, created bots to try to solve this, and uh, most notably the paper from Cal Poly University, they, used, uh, they tried to make codenames bots with different natural language processing approaches, Word, WordNet, WordDevec, GloV, and tested how well they worked with each other. And then there are two others here who also create, used uh, word vector models to create codename bots. And so the improvements with my bot over these past ones is that instead of only looking at the current game state, my bot looks at potential future states to determine the hint that will yield the best result. I also introduced a new method of parsing Wikipedia pages for connections, and I tested mine with real people to see how well mine works with real human operatives. So this is an overview of how the setup of my bot works. So each word in the game is put onto a graph, and then additional nodes are added to this graph for each word that is similar to the game words, and the weight of these edges is how strong the connection is. So how I add these hint nodes is uh, I use two different techniques to do this. The first is Wikipedia. I parse Wikipedia pages for the given words and extract the 1,000 words that appear the most. And then the weight of the edge between this Wikipedia word and the given word is how frequently the word appears in these pages. Next, I also use a word-to-vector model. So I use a pre-trained model built on Google News articles to extract associated words and how strongly they are associated. word to vector is a neural network that was trained on Google News articles, and this is the same model that Jeremy Nyman uses in my reference prior work. So then an overview of how the bot actually decides what the best choice to make is. And to do this, it uses a forward search over all the possible paths. And so from the initial state, we explore the best, the five best decisions that can be made. And for each of the future states, we assume that there are no enemy words. This is because the enemy team will be removing the words as the game progresses. We don't know the order that they'll be removed, but we can be confident most of them will be gone during our guessing process, and so we can plan our guesses around that. And shown here is a diagram of the tree of how we go through all, all of those paths until we exhausted all of our team's words. So the motivation behind this is that other agents' words play a key role in our hints. We need to give hints that avoid leading our players to their words. By calculating game states without them, we can easier give clues for our words, since the other team will most likely guess and remove most of their words by the end of the game. Uh, next, using a forward search also allows us to pick hints that are not just good for the current game state, but ones that give us the best chance of guessing all our words. In order to evaluate which of the paths that we found in our tree search is the best, the bot uses the following value function, where the path value is the average of the hint values divided by the number of hints. Since we want to finish the game in the shortest number of turns, with each hint having the highest probability of being guessed. Uh, next, this, this is how the uh, bot decides what the best hint to give is given the current game state. The, hint, uh, the value of each hint is calculated with the following equation, uh, where the hint value is the sum of the strength between the hint and each word. Uh, but if there is a connection between the hint and any of the enemy neutral or assassin words, the stronger than the minimum connection to a team word, the value is zero. So since we want to make sure that our hint does not lead to one of the other words. So the result of this is a Python program that is able to take user input and play a game of code names as a spy master. The forward search was compared to a greedy guessing method, and using the forward search, I saw a 0 to 51% improvement, or 11% on average improvement, in the path value, which is the average of the hint values and the number of hints, showing that the forward search is an effective method for improving the accuracy and performance of the bot. Next, the guessing accuracy. I tested the bot using several simulated games with five human players playing as operatives. And I used the word to vector model, the Wikipedia model, and I also threw in hints that were given by human as a control. And shown here is the average human operative guessing accuracy for each method. The human, unsurprisingly, is best, but the word to vector model does not fall too far behind. So the word to vector model is very good at uh, finding words that are used in similar situations, but still falls short of giving hints that could be semantically connected. The Wikipedia model was not very good. The words that appear on a Wikipedia page are not necessarily the ones that human would associate best with the word. So, for the future, the forward search method is effective at evaluating decisions for the whole game. Further improvements, however, could be made using a combination of different solvers to create the network of words. Humans can think of many different ways to connect words, and multiple solvers should be used, each optimized for making different types of these connections. So, thank you for your time. You can play code games online for free, play with your friends or family, and if you'd like to try the Spymaster bot for yourself, you can download it from my GitHub repository here. Thank you.